I do now. Oh, we're going. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. I'm Chris Peters, along with my co-host and fellow business partner, Kareem Mays. Uh, tonight, we have Mr. Ricardo Garcia. He is back to talk about Inkscape some more, and along with GIMP and some other software you can use for logo creation, how to you know photo manipulation, and that kind of thing. So, Mr. Ricardo, it's uh, good to have you back. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you all for being here again and to spend your time listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's go on, guys. Uh, well, uh, just a, a, a fast and a short review. Uh, at the last show, we have seen about Inkscape and uh, color concepts, uh, logo concepts, proportions, and um, well, today I'm going to start talking about GIMP. It's another tool. Please, we can't compare it with Photoshop. <laughs> Please, Photoshop, it's a monster. I love it, but I don't use it anymore for a long time. I just, I just see it by friends. They show me, oh, look at this new resource, this new tool, and I say, oh, it's great. Well, I uh, um, GIMP it's uh, a manipulation, an image manipulation program, as Photoshop and other ones like Art Rage and the older uh, um, Coral Coral Paint. So it's a nice tool. It's not so powerful as Photoshop, uh, but I can do, and I think that. Every one of us can do anything that we think we can do in Photoshop with GIMP. Um, we just need some more time maybe for some uh, manipulations because we have a different workflow of working. Okay, So I always talk about a workflow for working, for a job, for creating because when we have a concept in mind uh, and we have uh, all the knowledge uh, using tools and all concept knowledge, we can do anything. Uh, that's uh, an old uh, sentence, phrase that says that just give a, a new tool to 10 different men, men and uh, the creative ones will use this tool. The other ones will give an excuse to don't use it. So I think that all of us can use any kind of tools. Okay, hey, Mr. So Ricardo, I just want to tell everyone what the structure is going to be here tonight. So for the first 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to talk about what GIMP is. Yes. Then for the next 15 minutes, we're going to do how can GIMP be used to modify images. Okay. Next 15 minutes, we're going to talk about how GIMP can be used to create logos. And then for the final 15 minutes we're going to talk about what are the best practices when using GIMP and we're going to answer okay. questions and stuff like that okay perfect all right cool so, go ahead so let's go on guys so GIMP it's this it's a image manipulation program I'm going to uh, share my screen okay and uh, we are going to start talking about it using it okay <coughs> One thing I want to add, just because I really like when you say it, it, it's all just tools. Photoshop's a tool, GIMP's a tool, other <laughs> programs you might find, whether it's open source or not, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. and I think ultimately it doesn't matter necessarily. It can help if it's paid, but that doesn't really make or break. You can still be an amazing editor with free software. Yes, uh, uh, as Chris uh, mentioned last week, uh, the proprietary tools, the paid tools, have some difference because we have uh, paid programmers to create it, so uh, we have more resources, we have mo more power. But uh, where and when and how we can see the difference about the, the, the jobs made by an open source tool and a proprietary uh, tool? Well, uh, I think, and I always say, I always say this to all my students and my friends that work with. Apple and uh, uh, Adobe, for example, I always tell them when we always talk about this, that uh, the, the, the main difference is time. 
so uh, we have more product uh, pro more product more productive tools uh, with proprietary tools okay and uh, I have more steps to do the same job with GIMP for example and more steps to work with Inkscape uh, than I have uh, with Illustrator or CorelDRAW, for example. But I can do the same things. Uh, and that's the main difference. So, uh, when I work with a client, for example, I give the right time that I need to do that job with my open source tools. Uh, for example, if a client uh, asks me for a job that I can't do in the time that I know that I can do this, I just pass this job to a friend, for example, okay, because nowadays I, I do not use more Windows or uh, Mac OS, I just use Linux and open source tools, okay, because of man, many things, you know, uh, philosophy, uh, a small company that I have, so I, I cannot use uh, pirate softwares, uh, you know, so uh, I avoid this kind of problems and I prefer to use open source, okay? So GIMP, it's a nice tool. We can do practically everything that we can do in Photoshop. So now I'm going to share my screen finally. Okay. Uh, old desktop, share screen. Oh, just uh, a moment. I'm going to play here. Just a, a small part of the animation that I had. This is uh, all of these were made using Inkscape that you know last week and Blender for the, the animation. Okay. This is a kind of uh, commercial video for a client to show a product an internet product so it was a very nice job okay coming back to the okay uh, so this is GIMP uh, the interface is similar to any kind of manipulation program uh, we have differences from Photoshop, Corel Photo Paint and ArtRage and now GIMP but basically, what uh, is the most important thing to understand is that all kinds of softwares destined to a specific kind of job have the same kinds of tools. We just need to find it in the menus, okay, okay, or over the, the toolbox. But practically every kind of manipulation uh, image manipulation programs have the same kind of resources, okay? Uh, so here we have this main screen. On my left I have tools and uh, below it I have uh, properties of those tools selected here. So if I select a tool, obviously the, the two properties changes or the tool selected, okay? Uh, this is basically the same thing for any kind of software. Uh, I just remember now to, to, to try to change the, the language to English, so we are going to understand a little bit better, I think. Okay, I just need to restart it. Sorry, just remember now. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to open it again. Uh, so it's a fast software, it's powerful, not so powerful as Photoshop, please. We can't compare it, but we have a great tool here. So I'm going to create a basic new document. So I go to File, New. Okay, we have dimensions here. We have some templates over here. It's not enabled to me because I don't use templates, so I always uh, uninstall those things. And here uh, we have 
for example, uh, I'm going to start with a video proportion here. So, a high definition video size. Not a full high definition, but a high definition one. So, above the main window, I have the zoom. Okay, we can adjust it. Uh, and now I have my, my document here. So, uh, the same thing with Photoshop. I have the layers, I'm just adjusting the, the screen here so I can talk, see you, and work. Uh, I have layers here, okay? So I'm going to create a new layer. Why using layers? As I said in Inkscape, when I talk to Inkscape, I use layers and I think that any kind of designer and creator use uh, layers to organize the job, organize the creation, the art, and to use a specific effects over these layers, okay? So just remember in the last week, layers are a resource um, as we, uh, uh, we work, with, for example, with uh, layers of uh, glasses. So we have a, a glass table and imagine an uh, overlayer uh, over it uh, with another glass table and over and over we have many other glass tables. Okay, so we can put over the, those glass tables images, uh, cut out images, objects and looking um over it okay from the uh, uh, the, the, the higher the, the those those layers the, this image we can see all layers together so imagine this when working with layers we have many glass tables over and over each other and we have the effects looking for the high um the higher ground the higher ground uh, to the ground and we see all of those images together, all those objects together, okay? Uh, so here we have layers. So um, I'm going to open here now an image that I did last week for uh, a soccer player, a client, which was uh, a nice job, a card, a soccer player card. I'm going to open just to show you this. Okay. Not this one. Okay, this one here. Okay. So I have this. Sorry this final image here, okay? I have a thousand layers here with each layer with a part of the image. I'm going to close the, the, the layers. So we are going to see from the beginning. So I have uh, the first image layer here, a second one with an effect, Okay, a light effect, another one with the text, these ones here with a kind of lens effect, the soccer player in a group layer with many other layers inside of it. Hey Ricardo? Yes? How do I know which layers are locked and unlocked? You don't know? Yeah, that was my question. Oh, okay. Uh, we have uh, an eye on the left of the layer. We can close this eye icon. And um, when we open this eye icon, we can see this layer again. Can you see this? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's editable, right? So if I need to change something. Okay, if you need to change some something, for example, the guy here, uh, I can, for example, manipulate all the group of layers. Look, 